support farmers that are doing things in a better way. And the final quote I have here is from Margaret Mead, which I totally love. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever does. Change starts often at the grassroots. You know, I just moved to Washington, D.C. to be doing more policy work there, and I will do that. But a lot of the change is going to happen in communities like this because of people like you. And to that, the Animals and Farm Sanctuary say thank you. And uh, I guess I'll uh, open it up for questions now and comments. And if there's anything I've said that doesn't make sense, please, you know, challenge me on it. Um, I want to have a, and, if, and just raise any questions you want to raise. So what are some of the food-related health myths that are detrimental? Um, well, I mentioned osteoporosis and how the dairy industry keeps saying we need to drink cow's milk to prevent osteoporosis. I'll say a little bit more about that. Um, in our country, we have a lot of osteoporosis, and one of the reasons is that we eat way too much protein. Protein creates an acidic condition in our body, you know, amino acids. So when you have that, it has to be neutralized. And one of the ways it's neutralized is with calcium which is very basic. So when we get too much protein, and this includes dairy products, that excess protein is neutralized often with calcium, which is then excreted from the body. Uh, many of us have probably heard of kidney stones. Those are little balls of calcium that used to be in our bodies that are being uh, on their way to being excreted. So I think that's probably one of the most harmful myths because we drink a lot of cow's milk. And in fact, in the school lunch program, it's required that children receiving lunch be offered a glass of cow's milk. So the dairy industry is very influential about, about promoting this product and saying that it is healthy, when in fact it is not. Also the idea that we need to get adequate protein. In fact, we get too much protein, as I was mentioning before, and it's contributing to various problems such as osteoporosis. Um, and the idea that we have to eat animals to be healthy is probably the biggest, most unsubstantiated myth out there. I've been a vegan since 1985, and there's lots of vegans out there. People like Tony Gonzalez, who's a titan for the Kansas City Chiefs, is a vegan. And he's performing pretty well in the athletic arena. Uh, Pythagoras, who came up with the Pythagorean theorem thousands of years ago, was a vegan. So this concept of being vegan is actually not that new. But in our country here today, it's very rare, or I should say, it is too rare, and it's largely because we have these ideas beaten into our heads as we're growing up that eating meat is healthy, it build, and drinking milk and having animal protein build strong bones, and so on. But if you look at the science, it's exactly the opposite. Plant foods are much healthier than animal foods. I was at, a dairy, at, a, at an industry conference making the case that the most efficient way to feed the growing world's population is by growing plants instead of animals. I said that growing plants and eating them directly requires far fewer resources than growing plants and then feeding them to animals. You know, it requires fewer land resources, less water, less fossil fuels, it's just more efficient. And the industry kept saying that no, the best way to feed the world is through growing animal foods, through industrial means. And I kept saying, no, all the science is the opposite, plus these foods are unhealthy. Where do you guys get your information? And they told me the name of the book it was called Saving the Planet with Pesticides and Plastics. <laughs> and they were serious about that. So I think if we look at these issues very honestly and openly, and look at the empirical evidence, the answers are pretty clear. But the myth, the notion that we have to eat meat to be healthy is something I think that is completely bogus. And also, the industry is now starting to talk about how as other countries become more affluent, they want more meat. I think that's also a myth and a problem, and it's an assumption that I think needs to be challenged, because again, eating animal products comes with so many negatives uh, that need to be addressed.
Yeah, I did see that. The, there's a, a researcher who's talking about, or who assumes that factory farming is going to be with us. So given that, wouldn't it be good if we could somehow genetically engineer these animals so that they don't feel pain as badly? And I, to the first assumption that factory farming is going to be with us, I disagree. I think that we can start banning certain practices and see a movement away from factory farming. And I think we are starting to see little glimpses of that right now. But to this notion of genetically altering the animals so that they feel less pain, I think that's also flawed. I don't know that we're going to really ever be able to measure the animal's ability to feel pain or not very well. And there are things that it, it doesn't make sense. It's right, like, uh, similar to, to that concept is this idea that you know many people are lactose intolerant. So instead of just not drinking cow's milk, they drink cow's milk and then take lactate. You know, if the animals suffer, we don't want them to suffer. Why put them through that and give them or alter them? Why don't we just not do it? You know, so it's kind of ridiculous. We drive with our foot on the gas and the brakes at the same time sometimes, and we don't need to do it. So I mean. The fact that there's discussion of this indicates that there's a growing concern about farm animal welfare and the fact that these individuals suffer. So that's a good thing. But the solution and the assumptions behind it, I think, are flawed. And I think it would be great if we could move towards a more plant-based food system. You know, not this industrialized, commodified uh, thing we have in place right now. Um, I respect your um, decision to be vegan. However, it's also a decision to consume meat. So for those who, for those people who do decide to consume meat, um, how can you justify allowing pigs to be outside and still deal with the environmental impacts? Because um, pigs, they root in the mud, that's what they do, and it leads to erosion. Um, when, they're, when they're inside, it prevents erosion um, for those people who do choose to eat meat. Well, I've heard those arguments before. Um, keeping animals indoors, you know, I would say it's bad for the animals, it's not a natural environment. And when you talk about erosion, you know, in order to feed those animals, you have to grow a lot of food. And oftentimes that's done by plowing up the soil, and that requires a lot more land than if the animals are outdoors. You know, you need to, um, you know, grow huge amounts of food to feed them. And you also have tons and tons of manure to dispose of. So you have a lot of environmental problems with the factory farming model. In terms of animals outdoors, you know, I. I the, the ultimate view I have is that animals belong in certain ecosystems. And the only native farm animal in North America is the turkey. You know, pigs didn't used to be here. And you know, there was a situation with pigs in Hawaii that were rooting things up and causing damage. And, but those pigs should not have been brought there in the first place. I think that, um, you know, we, we need to step back and look at what we're doing. And the pigs don't have to be raised either way, ultimately. Uh, but if they're being raised outdoors, the animals are living a more natural life. They're you know, not suffering as much. And there is going to be some environmental consequence, certainly. But there's, I would argue, a bigger environmental consequence with the way we're doing it now. When I was at Cornell, I looked at rotational grazing for dairy cows. And I talked to the farmers there who had shifted away from a more industrial model where the animals were indoors. And they talked about how when they were indoors, they would go out and grow the feed. They would then bring it in and feed it to the cows. Then they would have the manure they would have to go out and spread. So there's a lot of energy involved in that kind of system. Whereas they put the cows outside, the cows would go out and get their own food. They'd go out and spread their own manure. And they'd live a more natural life. You know, so I'm not an advocate of any kind of animal farming, but I think that 